Hi, my name is Markus Taugwaldur. I work in the Network Solution Architects team for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. In this video, I'll show you how to configure IPsec connections on Libreswan if you want to connect to your Oracle Cloud environment using policy-based routing. To demonstrate this, I will set up two tunnels with two different encryption domains. 10.0.1.0/24 together with 192.168.1.0/24 will build one encryption domain and 10.0.2.0/24 with 192.168.2.0/24 will build the other one. That way these two data flows are completely separated. No traffic from encryption domain 1 can take tunnel 2 and vice versa. It's also possible to have another setup, but for this video we go with this one. For those who are not very familiar with Libreswan, here's a little introduction so that you can understand what I'm doing. All data flows using Libreswan IPsec connections are controlled through the setup of the central ipsec.conf file. The setup for a particular connection is defined in a separate conf file, but it is automatically included in the central conf file if stored under slash etc slash ipsec.d with file ending dot conf. Also the secret pre-shared keys are stored in files and then included in the main ipsec secret file. We will install Libreswan and then create and edit these files. These configuration files are basically determining what may go over this connection or not. That means every connection you configure in Libreswan is basically a policy-based one. A root-based connection is just a special case of a policy-based setup. The configuration follows the concept of having a connection with a left and a right side. In our case, the left side is on-premise and right side is Oracle's cloud network. In our configuration file, we create a virtual tunnel interface VTI for each tunnel. The VTI is configured accordingly to encrypt and decrypt the data. While there are other possibilities, we recommend using the VTI approach as it gives you most of the possibilities that real interfaces have. This is the network topology we will use for this video. On the left we have the on-premise network with two subnets containing user hosts and the Libreswan instance we will configure to create the two policy-based tunnels. Make sure you allow all needed traffic to go through your firewall, explicitly port 500 and 4500 for UDP and TCP. On the right, we have the OCI region with a VCN containing the two subnets with server instances in each. For building the connection, we create a DRG and attach it to the VCN and we create the IPsec connections with the two tunnels. We edit the routing table and security list to complete the setup. Please bear with me that I will not demonstrate the whole setup of Oracle's side. I will show you only the configuration of the IPsec connection and one tunnel with enabled policy-based routing. Please note that you don't have to configure a static route for the IPsec connection and no inside tunnel IP addresses. However, you need to configure the routing on both sides so that the traffic is forwarded to the DRG or Libreswan. Okay, let's have a look at the steps it needs on the Libreswan device, which in my case is running on CentOS. First, I need to enable IP forwarding. I do this by adding a few lines to sysctl.conf. Second step is to install the Libreswan package and then I create the OCI IPsec.conf and OCI IPsec secrets file with our values. 
I need to restart the IPsec service to read in the configuration. And then the last thing is simply check if it could bring up the connections with these configurations. I think it's worth to invest a minute to have a closer look at the OCI ipsec.conf file. From where did I take all these values? Best way to do this is to compare the file with the network diagram. Left is the private IP of the LibreSwan device. Left ID is the public IP used to build the tunnel. Right is the public IP of the remote peer of the tunnel. Left subnet and right subnet are the two IP ranges that build the encryption domain. And then make sure you enable VTI routing. By the way, if you need to configure multi-encryption domains, use the keywords left subnets and right subnets and provide a list with all the IP ranges you want to include in the encryption domain, separated by comma. These are the Oracle resources you can check out for more information and to build your own configuration. And here are some links to the new features. Now let's do it. First, I configure IP forwarding on the LibreSwan host. I start with becoming super user. I open sysctl.conf and add the prepared lines. Control X, then yes, and enter to save it. Then I check it. The reported errors are for redirects and are not of interest for us. I install LibreSwan with Yum. And at the end, the complete will tell me that everything is okay. Here we see the IPsec configuration on Oracle's side. The two tunnels are available, but the status shows down. If I start the ping on host user 1, it tells me that server 1 on the other side is unreachable. The same for host user 2 pinging server 2. Now I create our specific configuration file ocipsec.conf. I copy in the settings I prepared before and save it. I also create the secrets file ocipsec.secrets. The pre-shared keys must be the same as on Oracle's side. I restart the IPsec service to load the new configuration and you see the pings in the blue and green windows start to work. The OCI web console still shows status down for the tunnels. Let me come back on this later. I check the IPsec status on LibreSwan. It looks good. I check the status of the interfaces. Okay, that looks also good. Final check is for the IP links. Yes, this also looks good. Let me come back to the tunnel status on the OCI web console. Let me just reload the page. And now we have the correct status shown. Let me show you that it's not possible to ping from host user 1 to server 2. I start the ping from user 2 to server 2, which works well, but the ping from user 1 doesn't get through because of the encryption domain setting. Same behavior for the other encryption domain. When I ping server 1 from user 1, it works well, but the ping from user 2 to server 1, that doesn't work. All right, that's it from my side. I hope I could help you with this video. Thank you and have a nice day.